Well, hello, let's talk about risks. R-I-S-K-S. And just to show that this is actually a real honest-to-goodness chalkboard, I'm going to show you all how I wrote this. What is a risk? First is, it's an uncertain event or condition. It's always in the future. As one or more causes, could affect at least one project objective. It's usually in the form of our triple constraint, which is impacting scope, in other words, the features, schedule, which is time, cost, same as budget, and quality, which implies a certain degree of customer satisfaction. We're not just going to talk about risk, but we're also going to talk about risk management. A way to look at this is that you have a knob, and I call this a riskometer. And by the way, don't look it up. It goes basically from 0% to 100%. Risk management has the objective to decrease the probability and impact of a negative event to occur. This is your job. A way to look at it could possibly be that you have a probability function P on a negative risk. If it is viewed as being 50%, which is up here in the middle, then it's your job and your team's job to reduce that as low as possible in this example of showing it go down. In the case of a positive risk event, you are to increase the probability. That could be shown by turning your riskometer up and increase the probability and impact of that. This is also your job. All projects have risk, and they can be known risks, and those have been identified and analyzed, making it possible to make a plan to handle that risk. And we can show that as a project with iteration, such as you would find with a more agile project. And the analysis of it is to identify that risk and to handle the risk. Unknown risks, however, are those to be feared? That's a question mark. This usually means that they can't be easily managed in a proactive fashion. In this case, your plan may simply be a contingency plan. Any risk that is 100% certain is no longer a risk. It's a certainty. For those of you in project management land, the PMBOK guide has all sorts of processes that are involved with risk management. And these happen to be processes in the risk management knowledge area. We use KA to mean knowledge area. These processes, beginning with plan risk management, to identifying risks, all the way to monitoring and controlling risks, are a key part of the PMI PMBOK guides, tools, and techniques. We won't go through them here. Just know that the project managers have a wealth of tools and techniques available to help them handle the most difficult part of your job, risk management. The more experienced the project manager, probably the more unknown risks become known sooner. Sometimes, however, with the least experienced project manager, the more surprise risks show up. If you found that your projects are flooded with ongoing risk, you may wish to re-examine your planning processes. A company that thrives on overcoming risk as a consistent theme with all-nighters, code fests, whatever, may sometimes achieve the impossible. As luck typically runs out, it could be your lack of planning. It's just plain not acceptable. Ha! Here's something you may not expect. According to Michael Newell's Preparing for the Project Management Professional PMP Certification Exam, boy, a lot of these project management books have really long titles. If you play it safe and avoid handling risks, your project could take twice as long and use twice as many resources. Mention the word risk and you'll assume a negative. Okay, there are two types of risks. A threat is an event that has a negative consequence. A threat exploits a vulnerability. An opportunity exploits an issue that can result in an improvement over a planned outcome. Can you think of an example of each? As a threat, let's look at a resource issue. Your key technical writer for your project is scheduled to complete your product's user guide on time and with completeness. Unfortunately, she's on too many projects. Tech writer buried. I mean, not really buried. The effect of this threat is if you stick to the current schedule, you're going to have an incomplete product, at least in the terms of the documentation. Resources are tight, so you just can't hire somebody else. Now that you've identified the cause, analyzing the effects, keeping things status quo, you're going to be late. One possible remedy is that you negotiate with other project managers that you focus the tech writer on your project 100% of the time just to get your work done and they can do the same with the other projects instead of trying to time slice. 
this tech resource, and we would call this time boxing. So that could be a remedy. There's a cause, an effect, and a remedy. Okay, let's do the same thing with an opportunity. The amount of work required to test your project is more than the planned resources can get done. In evaluating the risk, however, there are test plans. In fact, there are good test plans with test cases. The team believes that the project objectives could be positively improved by adding just one more experienced tester for one month. So what is the overall cause of this risk? There are more test to run than you have people. What's the effect? Reduce schedule, add one resource, and what's the remedy or even the outcome? You could spend $10,000 of cost to bring a release in by one month. Your product manager estimated that this early delivery will result in more loot, $150,000 of revenue that was unexpected for this month. Finally, how risk tolerant are you? You can discuss risk management until you're blue in the face, but your culture and risk tolerance plays an important part in how risks are handled. Here's three characteristics of risk tolerance. Consider which best applies to you. First is risk averse. This is where risks tend to be avoided. The team gravitates towards tackling only low-hanging fruit. This basically means easy choices. Next, a risk seeker. Early adopters, startup folks, hunting for the big win, typically result in an all-or-nothing risk management approach, which can impact a project. And then, of course, you've got the risk-neutral style of risk tolerance. Risks are handled on a case-by-case -case basis with the overall result of middle-of-the-road decisions. So pick one. Which are you? Okay, as an example, I'm going to be risk-neutral. Let's expand the table and explore just how your team's risk tolerance is. Which are they? Risk averse, risk seeker, risk neutral. I'm going to venture to guess that your team is much more conservative and is heavily risk averse. And then what about your management, the executives? and organizations that I've worked with, I'd say they're going to be risk seekers, looking for any and every opportunity in this tough economy to take advantage of opportunities. And in fact, it could be viewed as being a gunslinger. Anybody see the issue here? You should. Your culture is not unified. And you probably feel it when risks are brought to the table. There could be a real breakdown in getting closure if the three organizations, you as the leader and the team and the executives, do not practice consistent risk management approaches. There's no easy answer for a situation like this, but recognize the differences. In fact, this may facilitate better ways to understand how to work through managing these risks as they come up on a project, especially knowing how your team's going to react and how your management is going to react. The best organizations are those who are not shocked by risks, encourage transparency, and open communication of risks. In my experience, the best project managers anticipate risks, objectively bring out the risk to the team and management in a timely manner, and are gung-ho to reduce the negative risk and to increase the positive risk opportunities. Taking calculated risks is often necessary to propel and grow your business forward. I hope you have a renewed interest in embracing risks on your project. So now you know.